Welcome back to Coffee Lover 239 Productions. Time to commentate on Rubbish Reviews Commentary. <sighs> of the Irate Gamers Review of Mario is Missing and Mario's Time Machine which were on the NES and SNES. Let's just get this out of the way quickly. Alright, let's go. Alright. Rubbish Reviews. This theme song is probably the only good part. This review is about to go down downhill in 3, 2, 1. Previously on Rubbish Reviews, we saw the irate gamer Super Mario Bros. 2 review, which sucked. I'll make a commentary on that when I get a chance to. And he's not done yet with reviewing Mario games. He reviewed two more for the NES and SNES. In the early 1990s, Super Mario World became an instant hit with gamers. So Nintendo in turn made two more Mario titles. No, they do. Radical Entertainment is about games. You know, the one that ruined Crash Bandicoot. Yeah, I do agree with that. That is true. I did look it up on Wikipedia. So... Oh, it's Strike One against the Irate Gamer. He didn't do his research, like always. I don't want to start an army, though. But instead of making another fun side-scrolling adventure game, they made two shitty educational games. Mm -hmm. And these were called Mario's Time Machine and Mario's Missing. Now, I only have time to review one of these games, so which one should I choose? Hmm. Now, I'm sure that reviewing either of these games will affect the outcome of my day. So, I should probably choose wisely. Well, I guess I'll re Well, that was a pointless Jeopardy joke. I, mean, I didn't laugh at all. Now, strike one against DJ Cruel Rebirth. Not funny! Review <laughs> Mario is missing. Uh huh. The first thing that happens, we see Mario get a bag thrown over his head. How does he get inside the bag? Is there a hole in the bottom? Sorry, wrong clip. Again, not funny! <laughs> okay, so the story is Mario's been kidnapped. So for this game, You'll be playing as Luigi. Now, picking any of these doors in the main area will transport you to a different city around the world. And you'll quickly learn by talking to the townspeople that these cities are being overrun by Koopa Turtles. As long as it's not run by Justin Bieber fangirls. Not funny! <laughs> Here's another one. Hey, what the hell? Did I just walk right through them? Yep, Chris. What kind of bullshit game is this? A poorly programmed game. You can mash their brains and all you oh want. My God. They won't be able to do a damn thing about it. Mm hmm So wait a minute. This game pretty much gives you diplomatic immunity. You know, for kids. Sweet. Hey, maybe I can get away with pissing on public property too. You know, for kids. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. Uh, and maybe I can get away with the a uh, by showing you the lame alternate scene. Mario's missing game, twenty dollars. NES controller, five dollars. Missing on public property in another country without suffering the consequences, priceless. Some things in life you just can't buy, but for everything else, there's irate Mastercard. Everyone doesn't get it. He's spoofing Mastercard. He's making a reference to those quote unquote Mastercard commercials. You know, the one that featured the Simpsons in it. Remember where Homer refused to do what the announcer says? I would just say no, go to that studio, and beat the shit out of that announcer. I'm serious, I would. And boy, this is already bad. No humor whatsoever. DJ Cruel.
like I have to hold Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy in my arms to relax myself. But enough of that. Let's get back. It's a scam. That's it. That's if it was real, of course. Okay, so after picking up an item on Koopa Turtles drop, it's then time to take it over to an information booth. Now, what I find odd at this point is that the receptionist doesn't take the item back right away. Instead, she'll just sit there and ask you a bunch of questions. Hey, what the hell do you think this is, lady? The Spanish Inquisition? Just take back the damn item already. God, this game sucks. Should just pick the other game. Well, let's see what happens on an alternate timeline. I wonder if by now that Chris realized it wasn't made by Nintendo. I'm sure maybe he realized it three weeks later. Now, I only have time to review one of these games, so which one should I choose? Timeline 2. Now, I'm sure that reviewing either of these games will affect the outcome of my day. The only outcome you get is losing. So I should probably choose wisely. And what does he choose? Well, I guess I'll review Mario's Time Machine. Of course, he chooses the opposite. In this game, you take control of Mario, and in the first area, Mario has a choice of picking from any of these seven doors. After picking one, you'll then enter into an area that's a classic throwback to the first Mario Brothers game. So after defeating all three turtles, and picking up the item they leave behind, it's time to head over to your time machine and figure out which time period the item belongs to. So, since we picked up a torch, odds are it came from ancient Greece. Mm -hmm. In each time period, your mission objective is to return the item from the area it was stolen. Mission objective? Aw, oh, crap. I know Mario is running an errand for Irate Undercover, not Irate Mastercard. Again, not funny! <laughs> yeah, like I care. You see? These, he's trying to make all these jokes, but they're so bad. I mean, ugh. They're so bad, like you'd have to watch a ton of My Little Pony Friendships Magic to forget you even watched this. I'm not joking. I'm figuring this out should be pretty simple. I mean, torch, torch stand, yeah, that's a no-brainer. Yep. So after you've successfully returned the item, the day is saved. Look at Chris making up things on the newspaper. I bet his fanboys didn't realize it. Huh? Hey, I realize it, and I'm a fanboy. Sort of. You return back to the first area to pick another door, and fight off another set of turtles. Oh boy, another set? Yep. Ugh, this is going to be a long game. You betcha. So after you've defeated this set of turtles, they now drop an apple. Hey! So this probably belongs to the time of Sir Isaac Newton. So 1687. At the end of this level, we whatever. come to a huge tree. So wow. the only thing left to do now is to drop off the item. Fail! by having a little bird fly across the screen to take the item away from you. What a dick! <laughs> Hold on. I think I saw that somewhere before. Oh, yeah, yeah, we know. I, we know, angry the video game here, blah, 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 blah. The clues are talking about Isaac Newton, and there's a tree. Didn't Newton come up with his theory of gravity from an apple dropping from a tree? It yeah. It makes sense. So I release the apple, I'm told it's the wrong location, and a bird comes and takes the apple away. Now you have no choice but to head back to your time machine, re-enter the same door, kill three more turtles, grab the dropped item, hop your happy ass back into the time machine, return to the level, and head back to the tree. Whew, I thought this game was supposed to be fun. Yeah, I'm having a real party over here. All right. So where exactly am I supposed to put this stupid apple? On top of the tree. They don't tree. really want me to put it in the tree, do they? Well, yes. Oh, you motherfuckers! <laughs> nice. Mario saves the day, paper boy fire, Miss Pac- Bam files for divorce, Dr. Kong arrested, I'm barrel throwing assault charges, and irate gamer pissed again. Cause he's irate! I hate this game! You should. Her <laughs> her, I'm funny. You're not! Well, guess what, DJ Cool Rebirth? Another NOT FUNNY! <laughs> See, none of this crap is funny. 
You think it's funny? No, I'm not laughing my ass off, and you should be laughing your ass off as well, unless you're stupid. in front of the door. Now it's time to enter through another door, and you guessed it, kill, kill off more of these stupid, stupid turtles. Of course! Of course! And no one can talk to a horse, of course! That is, of course, unless the horse is the famous Mr. Ed! Yay! Not even a nostalgia critic joke was funny. I almost came close to laughing, but then I realized not funny was not funny, and it was not fucking funny! Point it! I mean, seriously, this whole commentary is already bad, even with the nostalgia critic joke. But now, they'll start dropping items that are hard to figure out which time period they come from. Like the steering wheel, for instance. From the... Does it belong to Jeremy Clarkson? Holy shit, it does. Well, I guess we'll try 1602. Okay, so drop it here and, uh... Ah, Sorry, Mario. And here comes that stupid bird again. That bird knows you, and it doesn't like your reviews. Well, you little shit! I got a bird of my own for ya! <laughs> oh, oh, you're playing a Mario game! You mind if I watch? Ronnie, I don't have time for your crap today. Get the hell out of here! Oh, my god. Wait, wait, what a grouch! Mm hmm. What do you expect? Alright, getting so back to timeline one. Once returns all three stolen items and Mario is missing, it's now time to get the hell out of here. So after returning back to the main area and picking another door, you'll arrive in a brand new city. And your long and boring search for three more items will begin all over again. Well, you lucky bastard. That would be you, Chris. It would be you. Now, this you. game has a total of 14 boring and shit levels to explore. So if you manage not to hang yourself by the end of this game, then consider yourself a winner. Oh, oh, you're playing a Mario game. You mind if I watch? Well, if you don't mind being bored to tears, be my guest. Oh, this is great. Mm -hmm. So after completing all the levels, we then arrived at the last boss of the game. And just what the hell is this? Crash Bandicoot! <laughs> Lame! And not quite. Keep in mind, Radical Entertainment was the ones that developed this game. Also, they developed the new Crash Bandicoot titles. Hey, didn't they develop the Simpsons Road Rage and Simpsons Hidden Run? They did. And just what the hell is this? A Koopa Bull? Yeah. He can't even hurt you either. What a joke. So after you defeat this stupid thing, you'll be able to free Mario from his prison, and you'll get a screen that just says, Thank you? Oh, come on, this is all I get? You gotta be shitting me! I played this game for over three hours! Shitty ending is shitty. Even in this day, he still gets pissed at shitty endings, because he's irate. It's in his name. So Mario's missing is a piece of shit. Too bad it took two to three takes to get it right. But hey, at least they got it right, so that doesn't matter. If you mess up at any point in Mario's time machine, you'll be forced to go back and kill more of these stupid damn turtles. Stupid damn rat. After you've killed them off again, they now drop a quill pen. That goes to well, the signing of the declaration. this over to Gettysburg. Makes sense, right? I think it belongs from this time of the signing of the Declaration of Independence, because you can't sign without a quill pen. Genius. See? Not... Oh, no. Not that stupid bird! Stupid goddamn... Other... In... Yeah, kill that bird! <laughs> then why is Mario still looking up? Cause he's a... Cause he's an asshole! That's why. Yeah, take that, asshole! Yeah, that stupid goddamn bird. He's finally dead. But we're... But... One thing is still in the equation. That stupid goddamn dog. I wish you could shoot him. So after going back and killing a shitload of more turtles, they now drop a sledgehammer. Hey, now I definitely know where this one goes. In the 1980s, Peter Gabriel did have a hit song called Sledgehammer. So 1989? Here, here we, we come. come. 
Alright, let's see if this works. Well, hot damn, another success. Uh, joke didn't work properly. Yeah, the joke sort of didn't work proper properly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, brick that shit up, Mario. <laughs> At last we come to the final door. But before you can enter, you're given a pop quiz and all the information you should have been reading for Oh yeah, I know she's captured. Throughout the game. And you did remember to read all this stuff, right? No. no. Well, shit, me neither. Oh well, we'll just consult the Nintendo Power magazine. Smart choice. We know who's in charge of Nintendo Power. So go and look elsewhere. Oof, off. So just what is behind this big huge door, you ask? Well, nothing more but tons of more turtles! Holy <laughs> shit, look at them all! <laughs> what? <laughs> Three eyes. Actually, I'm just messing with you. Messing with me? Well, explain this thing. It's a joke. And this fucking thing, this fucking thing, because the last boss, in fact, is Bowser. And just like every other pathetic enemy in this game, he won't be able to hurt you. So after defeating him, because you will defeat him, you get to free your pal Yoshi. Wait! But wait a minute. How the hell did Yoshi get caught in the first place? I thought this bozo was outside waiting for me after dropping me off at the beginning of the game. Whatever. That's it. I'm gonna end it here. We can go into part two later, okay? Bye! The movie E.T. was a huge blockbuster for its day, and just about everyone who watched it most likely remembers the emotional scene where E.T. almost ends up dying. Hell, even I get choked up every time I think of it. But besides the movie, there was another reason that would end up making fans cry even more, and that was the E.T. video game. Back in July of 1982, Atari struck a deal with Steven Spielberg to produce an E.T. video game. It may have seemed like a good idea at the time, but the demands of this partnership would end up causing the game to be labeled as the worst video game in history. First off, the Spielberg contract called for the game to be released by Christmas, which only gave programmers six weeks to complete the entire game. Secondly, they were also required to produce five million copies. Well, this just turned out to be a recipe for disaster, since Atari games usually needed three to four months to complete, and the normal production run was around 300,000 copies. Yikes. After releasing E.T., people were so confused and frustrated by the game. People were so confused and frustrated. Atari was now stuck with 5 million unsellable copies of E.T., so to clear out their inventory, they ended up taking the games out into the desert to bury them. And since I just happened to figure out the secret location that these things were buried in, I was able to score some copies for myself. So, time to dust off the old Atari and see how bad this game really is. Upon starting, we're greeted with a pixelated E.T. head. I didn't know. With the goofiest smile you ever saw. Now, I'm not really sure what a shit-eating grin looks like, but if I had to guess, this would be it.
After the startup screen, E.T. must travel around the landscape in order to find three telephone pieces so that he can phone home and win the game. Now the only way to find these pieces are by falling into these holes, which end up covering almost half the damn screen. In fact, there's so many of these things, I can't even take two steps without accidentally falling into one of these fuckers. Now since there are a shitload of holes compared to only three telephone pieces, you'll be doing a lot of hole searching. Nothing here. Nothing here. And big surprise, nothing here either. Oh, wait a minute, here's something. A flower? I don't want this shit. Just give me a damn telephone piece. This piss poor attempt at trying to add strategy to a game just fails miserably. And the only thing that will help you save time during your search is a question mark symbol that appears randomly at the top of the screen. If you press the action button, the game will then tell you where a piece of the phone is hiding. So now all you gotta do is drop down and collect the piece. But even though dropping down is easy enough, trying to get out becomes harder than pulling a rabbit out of your ass. Ugh. The worst thing about this method is when you reach the top, most of the time you'll fall right back down again. Damn it! Shit! Well, come on! Ah, fuck you in your hole! Now, as if that wasn't frustrating enough, you also have to worry about avoiding these FBI agents. These assholes appear out of nowhere and take telephone pieces that you've already collected away from you. What a dick! Aside from dealing with FBI agents, you also have to deal with this annoying scientist bitch. If she catches you, she'll drag your ass back to the lab and pull you way off course. Even if you try to run away from these guys, you'll either end up falling into a hole or run into a weird glitch in the game. What the fuck? I'm not going anywhere! Ugh. This game is terrible. If you grab a piece of the phone, the FBI agent keeps attacking you. If you take a step in any direction, you fall into a hole. And if you get out of the hole, you fall right back down! And before you know it, the timer runs out! Well, I've had it. This is absolutely the worst game I've ever played in my life. If ET wants to go home, then I'll play his own fucking way home. I'm sorry, E.T. I didn't mean those things I said. I'll get you home. Don't worry. Alright, let's try this again. Okay, trapped on here. Grab the first piece. Search the landscape. Grab the second piece. Avoid this guy. Good. Alright, the last piece. Got it. Now I just gotta find the spaceship icon and call the mothership. Ah, there it is. Now I just have to go back to the beam outside and wait for the counter to run out. No, wait a minute. Get away from me! Stop! No! Shit! Well, motorcycle double fucker! Your ass is grass now, buddy! I'm gonna make you wish you were never born! Open up! This is the FBI! We know you're in there! Give us back the games you stole and we'll leave you alone! Ha! You hear that? They're gonna take your ass back to the desert, and I couldn't be happier. Oh, I can't stay mad at you. Come on, let's get out of here. I think we lost him! Come on, E.T. Make us fly! Make us fly! Ugh. Ow, stupid game. Not more E.T. games. The game E.T. ended up taking such a beating from gamers that no one even dared touch the franchise with a 20-foot pole. Because poor literacy is cool. But almost 20 years later, Nintendo took the plunge and decided to release a few E.T. titles for the Game Boy Advance. The first one we're going to look at is called E.T. in the Cosmic Garden. Time to plug in the Game Boy Advance player into the bottom of the GameCube and get this game going. 
Graphics by ATI. ATI, my ass! The overall objective in this game is to maintain a flower garden while keeping your pet from eating your plants. Now, if this game sounds like a piece of shit already, that's because it is. I didn't know. The main thing you'll be doing here is trying to keep your plants alive by giving them water, giving them food, and fertilizing them with your pet's fecal matter? Now, wait a minute. This game actually has us playing with shit? Wow. But not only do we get to play with it, but we also get to watch his pet take a huge dump. Just when I thought I'd seen it all. So after you manage to keep your plants alive for a certain amount of time, then it's on to the next planet. But besides the change of background scenery, we end up doing the exact same thing. In fact, this is pretty much all you do throughout the entire game. Wow, what a huge letdown. This game just sucks ass, and Cosmic Garden really needs to be shit out of huge cosmic asshole. Well, enough of that garbage. Time to move on to E.T. the Extraterrestrial. This game starts off by giving E.T. the mission of collecting 15 flowers that are scattered around the level. And the flowers are spread out pretty far, so be ready to encounter a lot of enemies along the way. Now, let's pause here for a moment. E.T. is only given one defensive move in the entire game, so let's go ahead and guess on how he handles himself against the enemy. A. He kicks them, B. He punches them, or C. Runs at them like a fucking idiot. Well, let's find out. And the answer is C? What a complete asshole! Now the next level is a bit more confusing, as now you have to try to find your way out of a huge forest that's not filled with FBI agents looking for you. This is the FBI! We know you're in there! Give us back the games you stole and we'll leave you alone! Well, mother sucker, double fucker! And don't let any of them catch you either, or else they'll make you give them a blowjob. Sick bastards. If you have to explain a joke, that is no joke! So as the game drags on, so does my patience. The mission objectives in this game get even worse as they go from entertaining to just plain stupid. Like this stage, for instance. Let's pause here for a moment and guess why we have to run around the neighborhood. A. To gather parts for a telephone. B. To find food for E.T. Or C. To collect pee blocks. Well, let's find out. And yet again, the answer is C. The stupidest of the three choices. I guess common sense really just has no place here. And I can tell that by all the pee and poop found in these games. I mean, hell, they even included a toilet. So what do they expect me to do here? Wipe my ass? This is absolutely ridiculous. But hell, if they want toilets so bad, I'll give them a toilet! Well, since these other games are too big to flush, just have to blow them up. Wait a minute. There's something written here. That's a telephone number. I didn't know. You gotta be kidding me. Well, forget it. I'm not calling. You're getting blown up and that's that! Damn you and your E.T. lovability? Well fine, I'll call him! Yeah, Mothership? I got your games here. You can buy a share in my rapidly expanding pornographic phone call
Castlevania 2, Simon's Quest, may be a pretty bad game, but it is God compared to Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. That, that game is just the epitome of bad. I mean, I know you've played a lot of bad games before, but no, let me tell you, that game is bad. Overall score for the game, we we'll give it an 8 out of 10. I mean, it's like Castlevania 2, you expect it to be, like, no, it's like, you expect it to be good because it's one of the Castlevania games, it's a sequel, but it's like such a disappointment that it's such a big fucking piece of shit. But Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and a lot of other Nintendo games, there isn't any expectations, there's no disappointments to be had because they're just, you know, rare, obscure games, like, you know, Mick Kids or uh, Taxman or whatever, you know, but... Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, as rare and obscure as it is, you play it once and you're haunted for life. I mean, I'm traumatized after playing it. I can't believe how bad it is. No, I mean, it's bad. Like, that's why I'm coming in front of the camera right now to show you with my own face how fucking bad it is. I mean, with Simon's Quest, you heard the sincerity in my voice. But now see the sincerity in my eyes. This game is fucking horrible! It's fucking horrible! I mean... It's like... Like, Pong is better. And Pong is only like three lines in a ball. Those little tiger, like, electronic wrist games, those are better than Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. It makes no fucking sense. It's like, what were they thinking? Like, I seriously can't believe how bad that fucking game is. It's so bad that I'm not even going to show it to you because it's just... I mean... Maybe you need some kind of proof. Maybe I should show you some clips from the game. It's going to be really hard, though. I, I, I just don't want to play it right now. I really don't want to play it. I don't, I don't even want to look at the fucking box that encases that piece of shit. That game's fucking bad. I'm going to show it to you, though, just to prove how bad it is. But I warn you. Here it goes. Here it is. Here's the piece of shit game. Who the hell spent this much fucking money on this game? This is so not worth the time. Right, first of all, who are these people trying to kill you? Why do you walk so slow? And the staff doesn't do anything. Look at this. I'm going to try to kill somebody. It's not going to work. See that? It's like they give you a weapon, and then it doesn't do anything. I mean, imagine if in Zelda, imagine if Link couldn't use his sword. And then look, then you die... And then you turn into Mr. Hyde, I guess. No shit! You walk around punching people and throwing shit, and then for no reason you just die. Lightning will strike, like, real spontaneous, then you're dead. And then the game's over. What the fuck is that shit? Okay. You've seen the game. Now, that should satisfy all your curiosity. 
if you are curious enough to play it, just do yourself a favor and don't. I mean, if you're like a hardcore Nintendo fan, as I am, and you have to have every single game in your collection, please do yourself an enormous favor and just stay the fuck away from this awful piece of shit. I mean, don't even buy it, like, used for, like, a penny or whatever. I mean, that shiny gold copper will be worth a fortune someday compared to this awful pile of steaming goat shit. I mean, don't even download it. Like, no matter how curious you are, just do yourself a favor and never play it because you will be wishing for the rest of your life that you could invent a time machine and go back to the day you played that game and just fucking kill yourself. I mean, if you ever find the game, if you ever see it, smash it. Smash it with a hammer. Smash it till every tiny fragment is like, is so small it's invisible. I mean... You'd rather super glue your asshole shut than play that game. You'd rather drown in gasoline. You'd rather, you know, the, the thing is, you think I'm joking like I'm trying to be funny or something. You know, the fact that that game exists is a horrible abomination of mankind. That game is so fucking horrible. And I am not kidding. I am dead fucking serious. Dead. Fucking serious.